Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. When I first heard Depeche Mode, I couldn't figure out what the heck kind of music was happening. And then y'all told me that this is normal for them, that they regularly break genres. Yet, they still have somehow managed to maintain a cult-like following. I am so intrigued. I want to hear more, so let's get to it. This feels so much more in your face than enjoy the silence. This is this is very interesting. A lot more, um, a lot more sharp attacks of everything. Uh, but there is a vibe, this overall ambiance that's set with lots of different kinds of synthesized sounds that I hear in common. Um, but it definitely has more drive to it. Okay, back to the beginning. Very interesting filters. So I have to always put these kinds of sounds into perspective for myself because I can go into a DAW, a digital audio workstation, and create different kinds of instruments that sound like this very easily. But this was created when that was hard to do. They were creating these sounds in the first place. And I think that that's amazing. They were using it in mainstream music before anyone else. I believe that they're really the genre starter, which is probably why it's so hard to fit into any genre. And when I think about that, I, I just think about sort of the wild brain that came up with this almost like a, a fluty pan bell that's happening. And then this uh, funky, it feels like a video game, uh, very sharp attacked string kind of synthesizer happening at the same time. The idea of combining some of these sounds is wild, let alone just saying that is a sound I want in the first place. I'm going to put it together with 10 billion other sounds that are just insane. Really, really cool. They create a soundscape that is uh, delightful to my ears and that is intricate. It has enough repetition though that it starts to feel like it could be normal. <laughs> Very sharp attack on that one. I like the way they switch the melody into another spot. Truly, they draw our attention to different instruments as it's going through. They'll bring different ones forward and then back in the mix. Uh, it's exciting. It feels like we're almost on this, uh, this journey through some sort of other dimension that's all built on sound. Okay, let's, let's get to the vocals.
This is uh, shockingly monotone. <laughs> I, I, I am like longing for a melody. <laughs> we are seriously hitting one pitch over and over and over and then going to the half step right underneath it. It's like reverse jaws. Boom, 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 boom. Right, it's like jaws attack if it was going upwards. Anyhow, uh, it's going back and forth between these half steps and half steps have a lot of tension in them in themselves, but that tension usually resolves or moves elsewhere. And instead we're just getting that same pitch over and over and over. I feel like they are just almost stupid bold. Let's keep going. Let's see where this goes. I want to be, I'm taking a ride with my best friend. There we go. There's that sonic journey again. That's cool. One really, uh, really cool thing that they've done with the vocals so far is when he said, I'm, it was just one line. I think, I think they might've doubled the vocal in there, but it's, it's all one pitch. Here we have harmonies that have gone into place the moment we switch to wheel. So it sounds like there's two people singing. They might be doubled as well, right? But the idea that I was one set of pitches and then you have harmonies in this wheel is uh that's that's cool so the lead on that uh, was still mostly on just one pitch the whole time. The lead vocal did do the step down. So instead of a half step, it was a whole step down, but still mostly one pitch a couple times that it stepped down. It's uh, remarkably static. Back to I'm. Back to I'm and a single pitch. Just wanted to point that out one more time. This is very deliberate. Whoa, this, okay. So what happened here is we did get these harmonies that came back in, even though it's the I'm, the singular person talking, but the harmonies came in in a much lighter way, very much in the background. And it was almost like it was quoting the other person in this situation. I think that uh, this was very clearly premeditated in how they were gonna bring in harmonies or not bring in harmonies. Uh, and uh, it definitely draws a lot of attention. interesting to me. I hope he never lets me down again. This idea of never let me down again. It's a best friend situation, but never let me down again. A lot of times if a best friend lets you down, I think a lot of times that really damages the, the friendship. Uh, hopefully, 
I, I believe in friendships that grow. I believe in relationships that grow. And people are inevitably going to let you down at some point. It's more about how you respond to that. Um, and there has to be some trust and some willingness to be vulnerable, to be heard again, I think, in order for that relationship to continue. Uh, it's almost interesting that it uh, feels like the lyrics are fixated on never being let down again, which means it feels like that trust never got rebuilt. I wonder why they dwell on that so much. A side note, I apparently did hear this in a placement at one point in The Last of Us. That was an incredible series. Um, and I, I just didn't know what it was or that it was disbanded. So um, it's really fun when you get to look back and say, oh, that was in that show. I had no idea. I'm going to go back a little more again. I think that they think about the vocal as another texture. I'm hearing just sound textures over and over and different ways of bringing them forward and back. Um, different uh, ways to sort of create filters on them or not. And it sounds like a lot of times they're looking for a, a more static sound to add to the mix rather than the vocal being this very dynamic, moldable thing throughout. I love the way that we're getting so many sounds added. Uh, there's a general theory about mixing uh, and just sound production overall that um, you have essentially this sonic landscape. I often think about it in this vertical sort of stacking form where you have frequencies. If there are a really slow frequency, like a wave that's moving slowly that our ear perceives, that would be a low note, a low pitch. One that's really fast, our ear perceives that really quick movement is high pitches. Um, and even things like a S, a S is a very actually high pitch. It's a high frequency. Um, it can be way up there uh, or like centered up there at least. And uh, when you're mixing or creating this soundscape, you have different areas that you can feel uh, fill because the ear can distinguish between all of these different areas. So sometimes to create a really uh, full a soundscape, you're looking for instruments that will have a tax that might be in one area and a pitch in another area. And you wanna fill this all in, all of these little spots. And sometimes you want to carve out areas for an instrument or a voice to come in and kind of fade them in and out. I hear in this last section, all of this essentially sparkle is what it feels like to me. The sparkle of, of sounds filling a spot or a hole that was in that soundscape. It's, it's intriguing and it makes me uh, almost feel like I'm, I'm trying to grasp at all kinds of different uh, sonic sparkles. <laughs> The vocals in that almost serve as a sort of drone, a, a almost grounded element of the whole mix. Uh, back one more time, I'll keep going then. That's a fun change. Oh, even increasing that soundscape even more. So epic.
this is when you think about the other music I've heard from them, Enjoy the Silence, this is so epic. This feels like a, a grand movie moment. Uh, like we're about to, uh, I mean, even with the picture here, you, it's brothers, like chumminess, but it also feels like maybe they're saving someone's life. Whoa. <laughs> So Dave Gon's voice, by the way, I did a watch, I looked around for some pronunciation. Most of the stuff that you read online is wrong. When he pronounces his name, it's Dave Gon, not Gahan or Gahan, just Gon, like G-O-N-E. So Dave Gon, his voice uh, reminds me a little bit of typo negative uh, Peter, right? Uh, his, there's a lot of depth to it. The natural tone quality has got... Uh, definite baritone, almost like a, a bassy kind of chamber in there as well. But he's not necessarily singing really low. He just has a timbre that feels um, very deep. It gives it that ability to drone on a lower pitch and have all those sparkles on top. Um, but they also, uh, very often, they're producing the voice that so does still have some cut because sometimes something really low in the mix can get lost. Anyhow, gonna go back just a little bit, and we'll keep going. so lost in there. I think that's because of the reverb. They've added so much verb to this part of the vocals. They feel like they're sort of swirling, uh, swirling, swirling, swallowing us up, swirling, echoing all around. It's, um, it's distorting my sense of, of that soundscape that we were talking about earlier, right? All of a sudden it feels like um, I don't really understand what the dimensions are anymore. Whew. And the way that we're leaning on, on some of these notes and the staticness of it almost feels like, if I were to read into the lyrics here, I would say it feels like this relationship hasn't been able to evolve, that it's was let down and that one person or both people can't get past that, can't move on to a higher evolution essentially of that relationship. And the swirling in here, it makes me feel like Somebody has dread that everything is just going to crumble underneath them again. Oh man, it feels like they were definitely let down again. Oof, uh, hands up if you've ever had a friendship that let you down or perhaps a different kind of relationship as well. It sucks. I love that we have this kind of music where we can essentially be in that zone, perhaps let some of those emotions out. I feel that those are some of the most difficult to really let go of. Music like this is 
cathartic in a way that I did not expect. If you want some more cathartic songs to listen to and analyze, check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music every day. Thank you.